So you want to build a 3D printing farm. Let me dissuade you. So I know I understand that me saying you don't want to build a print farm is oddly self-serving when Slant 3D builds print farms. So obviously, yes, we're trying to kill the competition. But no, there needs to be more print farms. There's $2 trillion of plastic material out there. We don't care if more people build print farms. Please do. But I want to warn you about what you're getting into. So here are the pains that we have kind of gone through here at Slant 3D, and hopefully other people don't have to go through them so that we can help accelerate the 3D printing industry. So here's what this is about. The number one issue that you're going to run into if you ever pursue mass production 3D printing or a print farm yourself is just the maintenance of the machines. Most people make the very fundamental mistake of just pulling machines off the rack and saying, oh, I've got 50 machines on the shelf. I now have a print farm, I'm ready to go. What they do not realize is that machines off of the shelf are not designed for print farms. Pick a brand, whatever it happens to be. They are designed for an individual in a garage with one or two machines who uses them intermittently. So they print a part a week or a part a day and that's all they have to do. If you are running a print farm, in order to meet costs, you have to have machines running continuously. And because all of the machines that you purchase off the shelf for like a desktop print farm are intended for personal use, they are not intended for the heavy use of 3D printing farms. This is the reason Slant 3D had to develop our own machines in house. You cannot use machines off the shelf. Now that may be changing. Hopefully more companies start to develop print systems that are reliable for mass production or larger scale production, but they don't really exist right now. And they're still kind of in the early stages of being released. They're moving that direction, but they're not there yet. Number two, supply. Now supply is a very tough challenge. Again, because the entire industry is focused on an individual printer user, it, there is not a good supply chain for things like filament. Filament, if you order a hundred spools of filament from most manufacturers, you will see variation within the filament. Variation in color density, variation in uh, shininess, all kinds of stuff that are giant issues if you line up a thousand parts side by side. Your clients will notice. But since the 3D printer filament manufacturers have no incentive to keep consistency across spools because one guy buying one spool of black will not notice that it is a little bit different from some other spool of black. There's no incentive to make large quantities that are really reliable for print farms. So you need to make sure that your suppliers are very, very reliable. This is something that we have spent years working on to and still struggle with often, which is why we try to bring filament production in house as much as we can so that we can control the quality that we are outputting for our clients. Problem number three, there's too many things to make. So with a 3D printing farm, you can literally make anything. So what do you make? Do you just start going down the phone book and calling up companies and saying, yeah, do you need anything 3D printed? Do you need anything 3D printed? Do you need anything 3D printed? That you can't. So you have to make sure that when you start a print service, that you have a niche, that you have a focus right off the bat. You can't say we make plastic stuff because literally everything is plastic. So you will start spreading yourself too thin across so many different groups of designers and products and styles that you cannot manage it all because each project that comes through the door will be totally different from anything else that you did. So you just run out of bandwidth to take care of all these different clients. Now the next problem, talent. The 3D printing space, the 3D printing world is very, very small. And it is not a simple matter to train somebody how to troubleshoot a 3D printer. And this is a problem that exists in all of manufacturing. Skilled labor inside of a particular industry is really tough to find and takes a long time to train and then they might quit and go do something else. So if you're starting up a print farm where you intend to have employees, you need to make sure that there are systems and processes in place so that people know what they need to do and how they need to do it. And that is consistent and reliable over time so that people who are inexperienced can be dropped into it and improve over time, but are useful early on. If you have 
dozens of different machines and tons of different processes and all kinds of different troubleshooting problems, again, generally brought on by off the shelf machines, then you won't have a talented staff because they will be frustrated and overwhelmed, especially if you start to grow the print farm. Next problem, power. 3D printers are not light machines. They absorb a ton of energy. If you are in an area where electricity costs are very high, it becomes a larger expense than you would expect it to be. And even if you have that power and it is affordable, then you are limited by the physical space that you're in itself because many buildings are not built for large quantities of 3D printers inside of them. Yes, you can generally find some place that can support somewhere between 50 and 100 machines fairly readily. And then if you have a reasonably large business, you can upgrade the electricity inside of a building in order to support those more machines. But there is some limit to it. Here at Slant3D, we literally, our mega farm occupies a prior train factory with thousands, uh, tens of thousands of amps of power running into this building in order to weld together one inch thick steel plates to build locomotives. That is the type of power that we need. Right now, we're practically considering taking over Bitcoin mining operations in order to support our 3D printers because they use so much energy. No more than any other manufacturing process, but it's so distributed and spread out in an odd sort of way to where it's very difficult to find the infrastructure, electrical infrastructure, to support it. And the last problem of any 3D printing farm is just marketing yourself. Right now, there is quite frankly, quite a bit of stigma around 3D printing. Is it founded? Most of the time, not. There are many ways to make 3D printed products as good, if not better than injection molded products. But there's still that thought process in people's mind because for the previous 10 to 15 years, they have seen their buddy in a garage making garbage parts and showing them what they can make with the 3D printer. So everybody thinks, oh, 3D printing, it's not ready yet. So if you're starting a 3D printer farm, you have to be aware that there's going to be a marketing challenge. People do not beat a pathway to your door. This is something that we fight with all the time. There is that stigma. So finding the early adopters who are willing to trust you to produce their product can be very difficult. Again, it's changing and we need more print farms showing that good quality parts can be made so long as print farms don't increase the stigma. But it is a giant challenge. So when you start creating a print farm, not only do you have the issue of what do I make, you have the issue of how do you convince people to have their stuff made with you. And I recommend looking at our other videos talking about the advantages of 3D printing, especially in mass production, in order to help that conversation along because there are tremendous advantages to having mass production 3D printing over other processes like injection molding. That's it, everybody. We might do a second part to this of the other horrible hell around having to build a print farm, but we wanna make it really clear that there's a ton of challenges to this, and it is not as simple as simply buying machines off the shelf and setting them up and you're gonna start printing parts. There's a lot of issues that can come up, especially if you decide to build a print farm as a service. Comment down below if there's other topics that you'd like us to cover. We publish every Tuesday and Saturday, so let us know if there's anything you'd like to see more of. Have a great day, everybody.